Un. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm your host, Team Hands, for today's interview. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We got the whole crew with us, so I'll make some short introductions. Today, we have myself, Sean Hands, and I have here my sidekick, Jenny Hill. We are both longtime Special Olympics Oregon athletes and members of the Special Olympics Oregon Athlete Leadership Council. And we have here as well, CEO, Britt Ois and Chief Operating Officer Mark Hankin. But today, the real star of the show we have is Carrie Timchuk. He's been a longtime supporter of Special Olympics Oregon, served on the board for a full three terms, and, exec and is the executive director of the Oregon Historical Society. Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for um, letting us have you today. Thank you, Sean. Great to virtually see you again. Yeah. Well, we have some questions for you. Um, it's okay if we ask you uh, uh, some questions. I'm ready, hands, my, my hands on the buzzer, I'm ready to answer. There is no math questions in there, just to, okay. to let you know, okay. What's up first? Mm -hmm. All right, Jenny, do you, wanna, do you wanna start off? Sure. Uh, Carrie, do you have a favorite memory of your time and involvement with Special Olympics? Oh gosh, that's that's tough. So many memories. Uh, you know, my nine years on the board. Uh, just, I guess you know, a couple of them. One would be the the Summer Games in Newburgh. Uh, you know, the late Ken Austin called it uh, called said Newburgh was Smile City every time the Summer Games were there, and he was right. There's so many smiles on the athletes and on their parents and on on the, the spectators watching and just seeing how excited the athletes were uh, to compete one but also for the dance they love the dance uh, as you as you know so that's fun to see that and just to see the the competition and uh, how much it means to the athletes to their families to the spectators it's you know it, I just couldn't get enough of it every every uh, competition I went to was just uh, just so inspiring. Harry, did you participate in the dance? I did I participate in the dance? You know, I, I think I was asked to dance a couple of times. I, I, I might have. So uh, I did participate in bocce a few times too, as we uh, had a little bocce competitions occasionally going on. So that's a great memory. And so. You're the executive director for the Oregon Historical Society and heavily involved in our community. Mm. I'd love to know what a day in the life of Kerry Timchuk is like. Wow, a day in, a day in the life. Uh, I don't think any movie crew would want to follow it for, for too much excitement, but it, it usually starts out uh, every morning like, uh, like Britt and Mark. I am a huge fan of, of dogs, and I have, uh, I have what I call the world's best dog. His name is Maverick. So my day usually starts with Maverick waking me up and saying it's time to go outside for a walk and rain or shine, uh, taking him for a nice long walk to get him, uh, get him some exercise for the day and then uh, come back home and uh, get ready for work and usually come down to uh, work every day here. Uh, the Historical Society is located in downtown Portland and then a day full of meetings and, uh, you know, since COVID, it's been a little bit different, but we've been we've been open the vast majority of the time, and uh, just meetings and talking to people, and and then usually uh, an occasional walk with Maverick in the evening. I don't know who is more popular in Oregon, Carrie or Maverick. Mark and I had the pleasure of going on a dog walk with Carrie and Maverick, and uh, we brought our dogs and. It was absolutely fascinating to watch Maverick go through Carrie's neighborhood. The neighbors actually leave him treats by That's the garage true. door. Like one neighbor has a Maverick water bowl. Another mm -hmm. one leaves like little bacon treats out and Maverick makes his way through the neighborhood like he's the mayor, which is no surprise for a dog of Carrie's. Which, which explains why Maverick is a little overweight because people, <laughs> whatever exercise we get is made up for about the treats that people are leaving for him, so. Yeah, he is all but shaking hands and kissing babies. <laughs> uh, Carrie, I've got a follow-up question to Jenny's around day in a life, and it's more about what was the day where you were at uh, Oregon Historical Society when you came across the most fascinating artifact that you've ever seen? 
Wow. Uh, this again, there's it's hard to choose a favorite artifact here, but uh, a handwritten letter from Abraham Lincoln is pretty good uh, to see back in the day, of course, when everybody did did hand, handwrite letters. But to see his actual you know, piece of paper and handwriting, uh, the branding iron that Meriwether Lewis carried with him on the Lewis and Clark expedition, something that was actually with uh, Lewis and Clark. Uh, every day here, we have some, we have some 85,000 artifacts uh, in our collection. Uh, so it's hard to pick a favorite one of those, of those 85,000, but uh, it's, it's the largest collection of organ related material in the world. And it's a uh, you know, real privilege to be able to help uh, safeguard it and to share it with, uh, with all Oregonians. I assume it's not stored in your basement. It is not, it's not stored in, in the basement. So there is, I get a, my wife gives me a lot of, uh, a lot of good trouble for, I almost lost one of them. Uh, the Portland Penny, Portland was famously named for during a coin flip back in the 1840s. Two early settlers, uh, Aza Lovejoy and Francis Pettigrove, uh, couldn't decide what to name the city they had platted out. Uh, Lovejoy was from Boston. He wanted to name it Boston. And Pettigrove was from Portland, Maine, wanted to name it Portland. So unable to uh, reach a decision, they flipped a coin. And we have that coin. And I took it out one time to a dinner to show to people. And a fellow who I handed it to then dropped it. And it fell on the floor and rolled under a table. Nobody could find it for a while, and I was uh, I was in a panic mode for, for quite a while. So, oh my gosh, that's a great story! I did not know that. I, I have it. not taken it out since, and it, <laughs> it and it actually had rolled under the chair of Pat Reeser, another great supporter of Special Olympics Oregon. So, that's, awesome. that's great. Um, if you ask the Special Olympics staff or my mom. They would tell you I have insane energy. It sounds like you do too. What motivates you to be so active? Well, I plead guilty to be uh, be active. I, I'm not a coffee drinker. I never developed a taste for coffee, but my wife tells me that's a good thing because I'm sort of naturally caffeinated and I've just always been fortunate to have, uh, you know, lots of energy. My, my life, I say, my, my motto is live life like a duck, cool and unruffled on top. And paddling like like mad underneath. So, I I enjoy paddling and uh, just keep things moving and uh, good things will happen. So, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So tell me, I love to know this about you. Outside of work, what activities and hobbies do you most enjoy? Well, be besides walking Maverick, because I don't want his feelings to be hurt if I didn't mention him again. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a huge golfer. I look, golf is a passion of mine. I, I love to get out to the golf course. Uh, so I play a lot of golf when the weather is, is decent. Uh, I also play tennis, which was, is kind of my winter sport because you can play tennis indoors. Uh, so golf and tennis uh, keep, keep me busy when I'm not, when I'm not walking Maverick. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? He is a, a, a mix. Uh, we did actually did the doggy DNA test after we adopted him to find out what he was. And he is a little bit of husky and a little bit of collie and a little bit of this, a little bit of that, the, the best type. So, all dog all the time. He's 24 seven dog, as I say, always ready to go. Yep, I have two of my own, so. Great. <laughs> Knowing how much you enjoy sports, I love to hear about the exhibit you have at the Oregon Historical Society that is celebrating more sports. And I know there's a very special person showcased that fans of the Special Olympics will want to check out. That's right, you, you, you are up to date. Uh, we have an exhibit here now called Freeze the Day, the history of winter sports in Oregon. And it tells the great uh, history of all the winter activities that have made, helped make Oregon, Oregon, from skiing to skating to hockey, to curling, to uh, snowboarding, uh, to the clothes that are made here in Oregon, you know, from Columbia Sportswear and Pendleton Woolen Mills that have, are part of everybody's wardrobe in, the, in snow activities. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, athletes that we mentioned and, and highlight in the exhibit is a fellow named Henry Meese. Yep. And of course, you know Henry, and Henry is a great Oregonian and has participated in the World Games in Austria and in a lot of uh, national games in Aspen and the X Games. He's a snowboarder, participates in snowboarding and in unified snowboarding. And he's won a 
as you know, a whole bucket full of medals. And oh, yeah. so it was fun to put Henry in the exhibit and he was by uh, recently to see himself in the exhibit. So that was fun to see, to see Henry here in a history museum because Henry has made history. Mark nice. actually got to ride Henry's coattails to the X Games, was it two years ago? Yeah, in 2020. So yeah. to be his chaperone. And uh, he is definitely well known amongst the crowd in Aspen. Um, and so it, it was really cool to be able to see what ESPN and Special Olympics at the global level have been able to do to help showcase our athletes in and amongst all of these world-class extreme sport athletes. So he definitely represents, and we're so grateful that he got the recognition to be part of that exhibit at OHS. Great. Absolutely. I've been an athlete for 26 years. It's incredible to me to think that 2022 is Special Olympics Oregon's 50th anniversary. I'd like to thank you for sponsoring an exhibit that will be launched in February. So we're in this milestone. What can you tell me about it? Well, we're so excited about this new ex exhibit, celebrating, as you said, 50 years with Special Olympics Oregon. Hard to imagine it has, it's been going on for 50 years. And it's, it's, it's a traveling exhibit. It's uh, three really large uh, trifold uh, panels that are taller than I am, and uh, which tell, tells the story of the history of Special Olympics and Special Olympics Oregon and honoring the athletes and those who supported it and giving lots of, lots of details. And it's gonna open here at, at OHS very soon. And then we're going to travel it and offer it to museums and libraries and civic centers around the state. It's already been booked for its first, uh, first booking after us. It's gonna go to the Shehalem Cultural Center in Newburgh which was the home of, of course, of the summer games for several years. And uh, the Austin family has been such great supporters of it. And, and they are supporters of Shalem Cultural Center and they wanted it there. And then it'll go elsewhere around the state. So people all across Oregon from Brookings to Bend, to Pendleton, to Astoria and everywhere in between can uh, go see this exhibit and learn more about the history of Special Olympics. That is so awesome. Carrie, you are such an important part of our story at Special Olympics Oregon. There are very few people who are as dedicated and loyal to our athletes as you. If you had all the athletes across the state in one room and you had the opportunity to share a message with them, what would you want to say? Well, I just thank them for what they do, for being involved in Special Olympics and for inspiring so many people. Uh, as you know, I love the oath that the athletes take uh, before every competition. And, and the title of the exhibit is Brave in the Attempt. And which is the, as you know, the athletes raise their hand and they say, let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. So I would just tell every athlete to keep being brave in the attempt. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, Carrie, um... Before we sign off here, um, you're such an awesome and amazing, cool person. Um, and seeing you at so many different Special Olympics events, I want people to really get to know you more. So you're not done just yet. We're going to ask you a few more um, rapid uh, fire sets of questions. So just like, like you don't have to think about it. Just like whatever comes to your mind, just, just answer it. Oh, boy, so OK. The first one is that you've been um, lucky to know some incredible people. But who are the few who made the greatest impact in your life? Gosh, uh, along with my parents, of course, but the, I've been fortunate to be in the political world and Bob Dole, who Senator Bob Dole, who passed away uh, late last year at the age of 98 and truly one of the most outstanding senators and public servants of the 20th century United States. And it was my privilege to be uh, his speechwriter and legal counsel for a number of years in Washington, DC and to remain in touch with him and just a, what America is all about, you know, grievously wounded in the World War II, risked his life and almost gave it for his country and then served in the Senate and the House and a fabulous individual with a great sense of humor uh, and, and stood for what politics should be all about, where, where compromise is what moves people forward and you don't call other people names, you just work together in a bipartisan way and that's what Senator Dole is all about. So he's he remains as one of my all-time heroes. That's really neat. 
What are three words your wife Becky would use to describe you? Oh boy. Uh, uh, what would she use to describe me? I guess we're trying to think of, uh, she would probably say busy. Uh, and I hope she'd say, uh, you know, good sense of humor and, uh, you know, Maverick's best friend. <laughs> so. I'm sure, I'm sure those are the three words. Um, but what, so what is your favorite travel destinations? Ooh, uh, I'll give you two. Uh, one is Bandon Dunes, uh, the fabulous golf resort here in Oregon, uh, about 50 miles from where I grew up in a little town called Reedsport, Oregon. But Bandon Dunes wasn't there when I was growing up, but now it's become one of the best golf destinations in the country. And uh, every year for the last seven or eight years, my son and two friends and I have gone down and we play what's called the summer solstice. It's on or near the longest day of the year when it's light for almost you know the whole day. And you play 72, 72 holes of golf in a day, four rounds of golf in a day, walking so about, awesome. about 28 miles of, uh, it's a marathon of golf. And that's uh, always a, one of the highlights of the year. Uh, and I love, uh, I love also the Palm Springs area, the desert. I'm, I'm a fan of the, the sun. Uh, and warm weather. I confess I don't like snow a lot of times. I call it the devil's dandruff sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> Wait, did you say that you walked 72 holes? Of I life? did say that, so yes. Wow, yeah, that's so, crazy. So. Did, you, did your legs feel like they were going to fall off? Because I they get, They're I, a little I, bit I tired. Uh, I only especially... did nine holes and I feel like my, my legs are going to fall off by the ninth. Yep. There's, it's especially tired the next day when you drive back from Bannon to Portland in a four hour drive and you get out of the car after sitting for four hours after golfing for 72 holes, then you can, you can feel it a little bit, so. Wow. If you could travel to any place in the world that you have not been, where would you go? Wow, uh, I would say, I, I would love to go to Australia. I think of the foreign countries that I, I haven't been to many foreign countries, but uh, it would be fun to go to Australia. Except they have a lot of snakes there, and I don't like snakes. Yeah, so. <laughs> avoid the snakes. Yes. <laughs> All right, so picture this. You're trapped on a desert island, and you have a backpack with five things in it. What would they be? Oh, my gosh, five things in it uh, on a backpack, a desert island. Well, food <laughs> and water so I could, so I could survive. Uh, something, probably a, a good book to read, so... Uh, Maybe a collapsible golf club and a golf ball, so I, I could do, uh, play golf. And and was I able to squeeze Maverick into that backpack? So. Oh, nice. Definitely. <laughs> I think you need to tell Maverick to eat less treats in the off <laughs> yeah. chance you need to put them in a backpack at some Definitely point. So. <laughs> uh, so if you're celebrating something, what is your go-to celebration meal? Go to celebration meal. Oh, wow. These are good questions. I am a huge fan of uh, barbecue too. Uh, one, two things, love barbecue and let me put barbecue sauce on anything and it's, and it's good. Uh, but I also love ch Chinese food as well. Uh, so we, we, we celebrate a lot with a dinner at a Chinese restaurant or we, we have some barbecue or I'm not, I'm not that picky. Uh, Italian, I love, I love uh, Italian food, spaghetti and pasta. And so. Do you have a favorite restaurant? Favorite restaurant in uh, the Beaverton area or Portland area. Uh, they, they Carly in Beaverton is, is okay, a great restaurant. I once with you and Becky. Yep, is, is a great restaurant and enjoy that, so. Yeah, now I'm hungry. And yeah. a restaurant called Hunan Pearl is our favorite Chinese restaurant in, in the area, so. That's cool. Sounds really good. <laughs> Tell me one thing about you that is surprising. One thing about me that I don't know if it's surprising, but the one thing about me that people are most interested in when they hear it is that I was a four-time Jeopardy champion on the television awesome. game show Jeopardy. So Congratulations. That, that always, uh, stops conversation when people find that find that out because everybody it seems like in the world watches jeopardy so oh, yeah that's the popular tv show game so all right um this is a hard one mm -hmm. um 
So what is your favorite movie? Favorite movie is probably uh, one of one of the a movie I'll watch anytime I see it's on TV is The Princess Bride. Oh, I love oh yeah. that movie. That's such a good one. That is a great one. And uh, what else do I love? Um, every Christmas, of course, you have to watch It's a Wonderful Life, which, which, is, which is a great oh, movie. Yeah. Uh, and my, my guilty pleasure is uh, Turner and Hooch. Oh, that's with, a classic with with tom hanks and uh, and a great dog so mm -hmm. that's a good one who's your favorite musician favorite musician uh gosh uh let me think uh i like uh, jimmy buffett i'm a jimmy, jimmy buffett fan with 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 his songs uh i and i i being as you know, being how old I am, I, I like uh, kind of uh, Motown music and music from the from the sixties and seventies. Favorite athlete, and you better say me. <laughs> we, well, yes. Besides the, besides the two of you, uh, <laughs> who's your favorite Anderson. athlete? Besides, yes, the two of you. Yeah, yeah. You start start out. Favorite athlete. Well. Uh, Again, someone who's not with us anymore, but I was uh, being a golf fan. Arnold Palmer was always my favorite golfer. So now uh, he played the game with with enthusiasm, and you could tell how much fun he was having. And so I, growing up, I always rooted for Arnie uh, to win every golf tournament. His 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 fans were called Arnie's Army, and I was a big uh, member of Arnie's Army. So. so you were a golf fan even as a kid, huh? Yeah, golf even as a kid. So. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. What is your most memorable golfing hole? Wow, uh, my most memorable golfing hole. Uh, well, I, I think my, the most memorable courses are uh, some of those abandoned right along the ocean shore. Uh, just amazing, um, amazing holes. I guess my most memorable holes, I have one hole in one and the hole in one I got is probably one that is the most memorable one, so. That's which was cool. here, in, here in Portland at a course called Columbia Edgewater. Very cool. Very cool. I'm still trying to get another one. I, I'll keep on trying. So. Nice. And I have one more. I have one more golfing question because I I'm a golfer myself. What is your most favorite place to golf here in Oregon? Well, it's got abandoned. So, and I, and I belong to a course here in Portland called Portland Golf Club, which is becoming my. Uh, Go to place as well to to get away and, and enjoy golf and and Oregon's blessed with great golf courses in Central oh, Oregon. Yeah. The ones in Bend and over there are wonderful. Uh, so in the courses down in the Palm Springs area in the desert, there's uh, I could find a good golf course anywhere. So. Sounds like maybe we need to get you out with Sean and Jenny sometime. Absolutely. So, and you can complete the foursome, Britt. There we go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> You guys would, it would be a test of patience for all of you, but I'm, I'll be the social butterfly along the way. <laughs> oh, there we go. Nice. Do you guys have any more questions or are you feel like you've gotten to know the famous Carrie Timchuk? I think we've gotten to know yeah. the very, very famous Timchuk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys have to come down, Sean and Jennifer. You, have, you need to come down to the museum so I can show you the winter sports exhibit and give you a tour. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that would be cool. awesome. Cool. Definitely. We will well, make that so happen. Much. Thank you so much for um, being out to being with us today, Carrie. It was yeah, awesome to see you. you. Um, it's been a while since I since I seen your face, so it's nice nice to see you again. Nice, nice to see you, and nice, nice to be seen. It's it's fun to get together like this, and I think the. My motto during this, uh, the COVID years has been uh, think positive and test negative. So, <laughs> I love that. that. Think positive. That's uh, good. So I'm going to continue to, to think positive and, and, you know, hope again we're coming out of this and we'll get back to uh, something normal when the, we can start doing competitions again in person for Special Olympic athletes. Uh, absolutely, it's been, absolutely. It's been too long and it's going to be... Long. It's going to be great to get them going again. I, I know it's coming hopefully this, this summer. So. Yeah, we're excited. And we just are so thrilled with the support that you've given us, not only this year, but 
over decades, you are just one of the most incredible supporters and advocates for our athletes and our mission. And we're so lucky to have you on so many fronts. I, it would, Thank you. So. I can't even count the ways, but um, just know how much we all love you and appreciate you. And we want to urge all of our fans and supporters to go to the Oregon Historical Society to check out both exhibits. And we'll be releasing information on our 50th anniversary exhibit soon. Um, and just from the bottom of our hearts, Carrie, you are such a dear friend and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's, it's been my, my pleasure. One of the honors of my life to get involved with Special Olympics Oregon. Lucky for us, right guys? Absolutely. Thank yeah, thank you, Carrie. As one of Oregon's top storytellers, we're just really proud to be part of that story at your museum. So thank you so much to everyone involved with your staff to make this happen. And Mark and I share a, uh, we're both graduates, proud graduates of Willamette University. Go Bearcats. Go Bearcats. So. Donna, you better chime in with the beavers. <laughs> go beavers. <laughs> go beavers. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. Thank all right, you. hope to see you all soon. Bye. Okay. Hey, great Bye. job, Sean and Jenny. Thank you, Carrie.